Good morning. It's time now for Coach's Corner. Live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop, I'm Tim Torrance. Thanks for tuning us in. We do it every Saturday morning from the McDonald's across from the Madison High School. This morning we're going to talk fitness and world's problems and everything else with Heather Foy. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Heather, I know we, we when I did the promo, we, you told me you didn't know what you were going to talk about. And I, when I did the promo, I didn't know what to say we were going to talk about. And I still don't know what we're going to talk about yet. So we're just going to kind of hodgepodge it a little bit. But one of the things I know, because you've got so many hats that you wear and things that you do, and yeah, I don't know how you, you keep up with everything, but let's talk fitness. And we are into the fall and we are into the, you know, almost the time where outdoor activities, that's not to say that they're non-existent, but it's more challenging. And, and for a guy like me, I like to walk, but man, the weather's going to get bad. What am I going to do? But what, what, what can people do? What's, what's kind of the, the regiment for people if they, if they want to exercise, where do they need to start? I think it's a great time of year to talk about that and it's interesting that we roll from you know, a lot of outdoor activities in spring, summer, fall and we just even did a little campaign called Walktober mm -hmm. because t traditionally, unlike today, October, even though we're about to wrap up the month, it is mm -hmm. a gorgeous month to walk. Um, for folks that can't handle the extreme heats, any breathing, uh, respiratory issues with outdoor high humidities, you know, summer is a great time to be outside, but man, it's it's miserable sometimes. And I love air conditioned, sure. um, you know, rooms at my gym when I'm mm -hmm. actually indoors exercising in the heat of the summer. But we hit fall and all of a sudden, you know, people are just anxious to get outside and enjoy the beauty of nature and in our community, you know, what a, a gorgeous area that we live in to, to enjoy a typical fall. This year's maybe been a little untypical, and with the dryness, we didn't quite have the beauty of the leaves, and right. I think they're all going to fall today. So I know we probably aren't thinking about power walking on a day like today, but when we go from a lot of um, outdoor exercise um, to facing those winter months and people maybe seeing those winter blues said and we lose some daylight so we don't have as many hours to get outside we do want people to have a plan in place for indoor exercise and i you know I happen to be a self-proclaimed gym rat and i love my outdoor right. exercise so people that know me may know that i live at the gym i'm a runner uh, i love to hike i love to ski i love to be on my kayak so i love outdoor exercise mm -hmm. and it's good for the soul just as much as i love indoors Indoor group opportunities are fabulous also. Um, being inside, um, you know, there are people near you, around you. You can learn from watching others. You can meet a new friend. A class is fabulous because um, it's a date and time on the calendar. So if I'm at home and I have an exercise, Oh, I still need to hit that treadmill. You know, we jokingly say that exercise equipment at home becomes a clothes rack. Right. It gets dusty. It doesn't get used. <laughs> um, and, and sadly enough, you get what you pay for, too. Right. So if you, you know, get an indoor bike and it's rickety and it just doesn't support you very well, there's a reason industrial stuff is, is better stuff. So we try and force ourselves to do it at home indoors. And that doesn't always happen because mm -hmm. there's another little laundry. There's a kid screaming. And, you know, the couch and the remote just calls your name. So you, I think... Having an indoor outlet is a good thing. And I see this often for men that rely on yard work. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes their physical yard work and not just mowing, but you know they get a lot of extra calorie burn. You know, even recreational church softball or right. pickup basketball, taking some extra walks, and that seasonal weight gain that sets in in the winter. As we age, that's not good for us either. We think, well, I gained eight to ten in the winter. Don't worry, I'll I'll I'll, I'll get it off next summer. And that doesn't happen, or we may get five off, and that creeping obesity is a is right. a true to term it, it happens so we want to have a, a plan in place in the winter and um, you know obviously strength training is a, a big help for that um, but a combination as always of that cardiovascular make you sweat make your, right. uh, your heart rate increase um, and release those endorphins as well as strength training even the newest Surgeon General's recommendation for exercise includes both of those it includes that you know moderate to high intensity exercise that you know keep your heart strong and some strength training so you know, as much as we love the outdoor exercise and as that begins to wind down I think now's, 
even though we think New Year's resolutions, we think, oh, the gyms will be packed in January. Now's a good time to look. Do I want to try a yoga class? Do I want to join a gym? Do I want to try a class for strength training or have an instructor that will guide me through it instead of me just picking up my five pound dumbbells at home and trying to invent my own plan? Right. So that that's the beauty um, of having a plan in place now. It doesn't mean you can't do it outdoors. You know, we can acclimate um, to the temperatures. We can adjust what we're wearing and be safe and smart. But And I, I run even through the winter outdoors as long as it's not icy. But having an indoor plan in place now is something you want to get a grip on now instead of thinking about it in January. You know, you, you talk about adults and, and what they do, but, you know, a big topic of discussion as always is child obesity. And, and it's, it's a little different for the youth when we go into fall and winter, but kind of the same principles apply to them as well. Absolutely, because we, we, our society's lost a little bit of traditional playtime, sadly. You know, we like to exercise our thumbs right. with our, um, you know, video games and not quite as much um, physical activity for kids, play, traditional playtime, because there's so much screen time. And um, I, I, even in my household, we, we see that with one of my kids. So sure. we want to have a plan in place with kids too so you know some listeners are thinking well my, are you kidding my kids basketball practice five days a week that's that's no problem at all if they're not already a gymnast if they're not already on the basketball team chances are they're also going to get less exercise they are not you know at the summer they may have been at crystal beach pool three days a week they may have been playing with the neighbor they may have been walking or riding their bikes more in the neighbor in this neighborhood those are great things sure. so having a plan in place also for kids and that truly could be you know a facility that invites kids to come to obviously indoor you know shoot around basketball opportunities you know many um, I know at, at Fit for the King at my club we you know encourage family exercise so we like it when that 14 year old is in there you know lifting with dad and we want you to be over there as well but even what I like to call lifetime activities that a kid that's sedentary might find a passion for get him in a karate class um, I know we don't have right now in our community an indoor bowling opportunity, but any even recreational activity activity that involves some moving so whether you're you know instead of watching another movie when you can get over to laser command or somewhere where you're moving a little bit even you know obviously we're not playing as much golf we're not playing as much tennis this time of year um, so I think about dance um, karate we typically gear toward hiking and and as much as even so some of that I mentioned lifetime activities like golf tennis hiking we can do through the through um, our senior years, mm -hmm. you know, it's not too young to teach a 10 year old good form on some basic right. weightlifting moves and turn on some music at home and dance. And um, yeah, I mentioned martial arts certainly being a good opportunity to dance sometimes. Even um, open gym at um, gymnastics um, world here, we're, we're blessed to have that facility in Madison. And I'll give them a plug because they've done a great job of pulling boys in. Mm -hmm. And I know even on Friday nights, they have an open gym that kind of gears toward the, the parkour and they have a climbing wall now. and you know, it doesn't matter if your kid's not going to be an Olympic gymnast. They can, you can pay a few bucks, let them sweat for a couple hours, and um, you know, release some energy. And uh, just looking for exercise opportunities for your youth during the winter as well. You and and I, we we encourage exercise and and to get out and do something and and to be active and all this. Uh, flipping that over on the other side. It's 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 not okay to overdo it, and you need to pace yourself when you do it. Oh sure, absolutely, and I think everybody needs a rest day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even if I'm training for a, a big race, there's a reason why um, you know you may have an off day or a rest day following a long run. You know. Um, I, there are still things you can do. Your body could benefit from, from some extra stretching sure. or even just a gentle walk. You'll see a lot of runners that'll just go for a walk or even get on a bike to um, just get the body moving a little bit without extra stress. Um, so I know right now one of my classes I'm teaching is a class called bar and it does have some dance principles um, but you don't have to be a dancer to participate but one thing I like as I'm aging it is always low impact. So as a runner I get a little pounding and my joints take a little bit of a beating. Um, I know some people call treadmills dreadmills. Um, obviously they're great on a day like today. Right. Um, I like a good treadmill. I do. You know, Good ones at gyms have a little flex deck and they give your knees and hips and ankles a little cushion because to do that over and over again on the concrete is hard on the body right. even for walkers but bar for example yoga pilates it's low impact so i get um, enough jumping and bouncing in my life you know, 
even at my age, and I found that I have to cut that back a little bit with some of the things I participate in with my dancers and demonstrate mm -hmm. for them and do with them running. So I like bar, for example. It's kind of a head to toe. It's a low impact. So when you talk about in reference, giving your body a little break and pacing yourself, I think a variety of exercise is a good thing. Um, that class, for example, has been good for me to get some extra strength training in, but not have that pounding on my joints. And it's really for anybody. We use ones, twos, and three pound weights. So it's not even about um, you know how heavy and, and can I go. You know, you may be challenged in other ways in different classes, but. Your body does need some variety. Um, as a runner, um, I've been blessed to do you know about 20 mini marathons, uh, only one full marathon, and there are even local runners so much more seasoned and accomplished than I. And there are some out there that run six days a week. My body can't take that. Um, you know, I had back injury growing up as a gymnast, and my body's taken a lot of beating. Um, so variety is a good thing. So even for that person that that um, says, "Well, I, I power walk almost every day, and I'm kind of in a rut," you. Know, you know, your body may need something different. It may be that you're going to take advantage of the lap swimming at the pool, you know, one day a week. Or, you know, you're going to join a gym and try two classes so you can get in some strength training and still get in your walking. A variety not only will prevent boredom with exercise, um, but it's good for your body, too, because right. you're challenging your body. You're working muscles in different ways that you weren't working before. A power walker uh, may have real strong hips, um, but they don't use the calves even as much as a runner, um, not as much upper body work. So yeah, variety is a good thing. and yeah. It just changes things up and keeps um, keeps things from getting stagnant. That's why coaches, even in practices, you may have the same warm-up you follow, right. so kids get used to structure, but the, you got to change things up. Yeah. You know, you talk about regiments and and we talked about pacing yourself and we talked about you know young and obesity and old and trying to exercise through the winter and not gaining those pounds throughout the winter months if you're not sure what you want to do and oh i, I do want to make a point too you, you had you had a good point about changing things up i found for me as a walker i have three different routes i walk so I have a little bit different scenery every time I walk. That's good. Just, just you know, and as an old guy, I come up with a good one every once in a while. So that's I felt pretty good. It's like this same route is getting old, and it's the same boring thing. And maybe I need to walk somewhere else. So I got three different routes that I walk that kind of changes up the the scenery a little bit. But when 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 you're trying to figure out what you want to do, what you need to do, what your body can do, and you're really not sure what direction to go, where can you turn? What can you do? How can you find out the information? That's a great question. You know, I, I, I smiled when you mentioned that point of changing things up. You know, one of the first things that pops into my head is if you continue doing what you're doing, you're going to get the same results. Right. And that happens often when somebody says to me, I, I just don't understand. I'm stuck at this weight loss. I've got 20 more I want to lose. And, I, you know, I, don't, I'm, I swear I'm exercising or I promise I'm eating healthy. And obviously that's when sometimes your body just needs a change. It right. may be a change in um, actually adding in a couple small snacks. To, to increase metabolism if you're going too long, you know, between meals, um, you know, or changing things up from a dietary perspective. It could be getting more sleep. Mm -hmm. And so often in our society, that is a determining factor for dropping um, metab resting metabolic rate, which has a huge long-term effect for, for weight control and, of course, energy and, and alertness as well. But definitely changing things up with exercise. And it could be, as you mentioned, just a different course. Right. I think your body wants to be challenged in different ways. But even so that mentally we're not getting bored changing things up is a good thing and um, I find that motivating ourselves mentally and also stimulating socially is a good thing now, I like my me time mm -hmm. I like those runs kind of like you you can clear your thoughts and I solve the world's problems when I'm exercising sure. my own I am have been known to um, go through hard conversations in my mind sometimes audibly where I'm sure if I pass someone they think I'm crazy talking to myself sure. but it is such good therapy to be able to have that me time. Mm -hmm. And so often single parents, you know, people that are busy like I, you have to, to take that me time. And there are so many things that are good for your body and it could just be curling up with a book. It may be a relaxing bath, but there's certainly no better me time, you know, as far as your health than, than exercise. But I equally enjoy that private exercise time as much as I do the social time. Mm -hmm. So when you think, well, where do I go for to get started or how how do I really know what to do the social piece of exercise is a great way to get started right. and that's another again it's going to be a push for for an indoor workout facility because you can look over and think oh oh that's what you do with that machine or oh 
that's a different way to work the triceps. And I'm kind of bored with that exercise I'm doing. Um, you know, whether there's staff there, you know, group exercise instructors in an environment. I've had a lot of people that said, I barely know what to do to pick up a dumbbell or push or pull those machines. I'd much rather just follow you. And they'll tell me, Man, I don't even have to think. I don't have to invent the workout. I just show up. You've got the equipment, and I just follow you for 45 minutes. You know, that's a that's a good thing because there's a guided train instructor that can teach you what to do, and you right. just follow along. Right. And that's the biggest goal. Um, is and really safety that helps also, so you're not doing something incorrectly. That's a, a bonus. Uh, you know, you can certainly do the research where I can Google basic strength training regimens, but it's overwhelming when right. you ask Mr. Google right. you know, what to do when it comes to exercise you can certainly ask your physician um, and they can give you some time but you know you got a lot to cover and a doctor's visit and they can give you some basic recommendations but they'd be the first to say you know, I don't have an hour to, to you know give you to, to talk uh, every detail obviously have, whether you're hiring a personal trainer it's just like somebody that says I think I want to take piano lessons mm -hmm. I think I want to take tennis lessons right. uh, you've got to find somebody who's qualified and capable to, to teach you the game of tennis now you can pick up a racket with a friend and hit the ball around a little bit but if you want instruction um, your safety tips if you want to get better you got to do it enough and you probably need somebody to guide you um, so obviously a personal trainer or again a group class is, is ideal just like a kid in their basketball game the more they practice shooting they go back out and shoot 100 shots a day they're going to get better it's also nice when they have a coach right. they can give them technique and tip and, and form and safety and push them also and I think that's the motivation I was just chatting with Gary over at the gym this morning um, he likes to challenge people and he's one of our group exercise instructors and you know he's, he's good at that he's you know kind of that drill sergeant and some people don't necessarily want to be yelled at and that's a good instructor also knows their students to know mm -hmm. who wants to really be pushed and who wants to just be led um, but that's the other thing if I'm at home uh, you know even if I'm following a DVD it's real easy when they say come on five more well if you just lay there you don't have to do five more and nobody's, nobody's gonna know gonna say <laughs> that's right so it's easy when you're on your own it's a little easier to oh, I'm tired I'm not gonna do that last half half a mile you know that's again a beauty of, of having an instructor um, I have to say I've got a little side project that Heather's working on because you know I need another one project in my life <laughs> absolutely um, but I've been through actually some training and certifications programs for motivational interviewing and wellness coaching. And wellness is such a buzzword. Yeah, I've been a wellness coordinator for yeah. 25 years. And I've been a coach for um, almost 26 years. That's a long time. I, you know, I feel like I have a little experience under my belt and knowing how to push people, um, how to know who has to be coached in a different way, who sure. wants to be. Everybody's got to be challenged and corrected, but some people need a little more of that sandwich effect um, when it comes to constructive, criti constructive criticism. But even when we think about life coaches um, so often people know what to do they know they're supposed to eat the vegetables and not as many little Debbies but right. they need some motivation they need a little plan in place um, they need to kind of dig deep and find out you know why when I'm stressed why am I eat, reaching for the bag of chips instead of taking a walk and um, I've got a little little side gig I'm working on um, I'm hoping to launch in January where I can take on some clients for kind of some life and wellness coaching um, because I, I really feel like um, it's extremely valuable. Um, all of us need a cheerleader in our life. All of us need a motivator that's going to be there to challenge you and motivate you and give you some direction. Um, so I, I think for a listener that's thinking, I know I need to do this. I need to make my health a priority. You know, it may just be your best friend that can hold you accountable and say, hey, we're, we may not be able to work out together each week, but let's, um, let's exchange exercise logs on Sunday let's tell each other what exercise we've got planned for the week and then on Saturday let's follow up mm -hmm. and let's see did, did you do those workouts you know if you didn't this week why why not and right. let's try it again next week so I, even if you're not quite ready to hire a personal trainer or you know I challenge you to try a group class um, even if you're not quite there find somebody who, who can hold you accountable Last segment, Heather, you had so many points of, of interest and it spawned so many questions, and I don't know where to start. So I'm going to go with, how about we go with um, uh, holidays are, are a month away. Um, you want to eat healthy, but, uh, man, there's some good food coming up at Thanksgiving. 
So what's a happy medium for holiday time? What a great question. Yeah, we hear that, um, those statistics when people talk about it. They used to say seven was the magic number. Um, as far as pounds gain, <laughs> um, we don't have to put a number on it, but uh, the temptations are there. Right. And sometimes the exercise time diminishes. So we do look at um, this holiday time frame. I'm going to guess most listeners, there's a candy bowl sitting out at the house already. They're preparing for trick-or-treaters, and they've been um, dabbing into that candy bowl personally. And we think, oh, they're just the bite-sized Reese's, but mm -hmm. how many did we eat? So, um, you know, that glass candy dish, there's been folks that have, have even written articles about that, how tempting that is, how different that is uh, compared to the glass fruit bowl that's sitting out. So we roll from Halloween immediately into Thanksgiving, and there are extra sweets, pitchens, stuff you till you have to loosen your belt buckle mm -hmm. meals at Thanksgiving, and many families have multiple sure. big meals, and then one big meal is not going to get a... Um, you cause an MI, <laughs> but You're right. um, you know when when um, it's constant nibbling mm -hmm. and and a lot of eating mm -hmm. and and some against more sedentary days, and and of course we we roll right into Christmas. The, right. the holiday trees are already up. Right. So. Um, it is uh, sometimes that's a month of parties, celebrations. Sometimes additional alcohol consumption for some folks. Um, right into New Year's evening, which again more more splurging, sometimes more alcohol, and then it's January first is when we're in a stupor, and then January second is when we think, oh my, I, I what have I done, or how much weight have I gained, or I got to get a hold of this. My husband jokingly says that February is usually the the busiest month for indoor exercise. I think that's because people take the whole month of January to to, to decide, okay, I'm finally going to do this. Um, with that said, I, you do want to have a plan in place. And food is such a part of our culture. It, it, you know, who goes to a birthday party and serves carrot sticks instead of cake? Right. And I wouldn't ask you to do that. Um, but you can't have the piece of pie that's as big as your head. Right. And you can't go back for seconds. You shouldn't. Um, and you have to find balance. So, uh, you know, having a plan in place and some own guidelines for yourself that you know, maybe every holiday party you go to, you're going to take a healthy dish so that you know there's at least one option there. You, maybe it's that rule of I'm going to have a bite, truly bite-sized sampling of whatever I want. I'm not mm. going to limit myself, but just a bite-sized sample. Right. And then I may go back for seconds of just that one dish that was my favorite instead of stuffing that plate you know, so full. You, you can use the same mentality when you're at Ponderosa. Maybe my goal is if I go to a buffet, I'm going to start with a salad. Mm -hmm. Once I get the salad done, I'll make one more trip, but just a bite-sized of those things that look good instead of stuffing that plate where food is falling off of it you know right. and thinking I've got to get my values worth of my money mm -hmm. how many trips can I make so setting some of those ground rules I think it's pretty ideal to think that getting in even just a walk following a, a traditional holiday family meal is ideal your body has what's called a thermic effect of exercise so your body actually while you're digesting and processing food your body's burning about 10 percent more calories so I know after you eat a traditional Thanksgiving meal you probably don't want to swim laps that's when mom would say Say, wait 30 minutes before you swim. Right. You probably don't want to do burpees or, or hunter jumping jacks, but I bet you can take a walk. Mm -hmm. um, you know, low impact, easy. Right. And if you do it even that hour or so after you eat, what a great time instead of loosening the pants, sitting down on the couch to watch football, and you fall asleep, and three hours later you still feel miserable. Right. So, you know, not eating till we're stuffed. Eating again to enjoy conversation, um, but not not eating. You know, ourselves into a stupor. Right. And I think over holidays, setting some ground rules, even with, we mentioned Halloween, some of those extra treats. Um, you know, maybe it is that small bite-sized piece, washing it down with a glass of water. Uh, you'll hear folks give a tip like chewing a piece of sugar free gum mm -hmm. or going ahead and brushing their teeth. I just had a dentist this week that said, if you're going to drink that soda, drink it. Don't sip on it for hours. Guzzle it down and then go brush your teeth. Right. Follow it up with a glass of water. Um, cleanse that palate. The same thing can be said while you're cooking. So we do a lot of holiday baking this time of year. Right. And how many nibbles of the cookie dough do you consume? Because I could yep. scrape the bowl. So having a piece of gum in your mouth, sipping on a you know a cup of hot tea, you know while you're cooking, those kind of things can keep us from constantly munching. So setting some of those ground rules is is ideal with the holidays coming up. It sounds like, uh, and, and and it is, but it 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 would mean a whole lot of 
self-control um, mind over matter if you will but self-control comes into play a lot you have to be willing to make a change you have to be willing to not eat that extra piece of pie you have to be it, it, it's it, it's not that somebody's forcing you to do that you have to be willing not to do it yeah and your goals have to truly when you boil when it boils down to it your goals have to outweigh your tem temptations and and you we all at some point in our life have to have willpower yeah um you know our children have to have willpower to bite their tongue and not lash out to the kid in class next to them because they know there's a consequence if a fight breaks out in class and as adults even if it comes to healthy eating and healthy choices with smoking cessation, look at the willpower that is necessary. But but do you want to finally get rid of that habit that is controlling you and has been a part of your life for 20 years? You're tired of spending the money. You know it's ruining your health. And those little white sticks are truly controlling you. Mm -hmm. You have to step outside to smoke because you can't smoke inside. you got to step outside to smoke on a day like today. Right. How miserable is that? Mm -hmm. So you have to decide You know how how important is, is that temptation for me. And, and when it boils down to it, I know Sue Livers and I have had this discussion many times. She's such an influence and a, a wonderful role model. It, it's an excuse. Mm -hmm. And we're all guilty of making excuses. And when people tell her, when people tell me, oh, why? No, my, my knee hurts, so I, I can't do those squats. Or, right. no, I, I'm too busy. I, I'm, a, I'm a single mom. I, you know, I'll, someday I'll exercise. I, I, I'm sorry. They are all excuses. Mm -hmm. And I'm well aware that you may not have as much flexibility in your schedule because if you're like me, I, I have four jobs. So, right. you know, for the, the stay at home mom who just recently said to me, I don't know how you exercise. I can't find the time. And she actually, I, I commend her for her role as in staying at home, but she, she admitted then to me that she does not work outside of the home at all. And right now her kids are even at school during the day, but she's so busy around the house. Mm -hmm. She can't squeeze the exercise in. She's got to make time. She's right. got to look above that excuse. And, and I am guilty also. I put something else above a priority of a healthy choice right. and I may put that temptation of the unhealthy food uh, you know above mm -hmm. the apple that I should be reaching for right. instead of the king size candy bar so yeah, I think it, it is priorities um, you know it's deciding uh, you know sometimes I'm very blunt with people you know do you do you want to walk your daughter down the aisle if so we, we got we've got to, to make a choice right. do you want to see your grandkids graduate from high school and have the joy of helping you know to watch them grow sure. up it, it, um, you know a, a friend of mine just faced a very scary sentinel health event in mm -hmm. in her 40s and um she's lucky she's yeah. lucky to be here yeah. um so uh, you know I, making how the priority is is huge it's it's so important well and and again it, it comes to the fact of you don't want to find out it, you should have made a better choice after the fact and, yeah. and a lot of people do that is after the fact yeah we're lucky sometimes we're, we're not always not lucky. always not right. always lucky so yeah and, and there's no better time you don't have to wait till january 1st you don't right. have to wait till your birthday you don't have to wait till great american smoke out to quit or whatever it right. may be you know you can make you can make healthy choice today and you can find life balance um so you know i can, I can have this cup of coffee in my hand and i even with creamer in it because i love it right. and i can enjoy it um you know knowing that you know i'm going to drink a whole lot of water you know today right. um so it is about life choices but sometimes kind of moving beyond those excuses and knowing that those healthy choices are are um, a must they are a must indeed uh our time is just about up anything else we want to hit on before we we wrap things up you got anything else running through your mind gosh you know always always lots of projects that i love yeah. of course to promote i know i'm going to get a chance to come up to wrx soon and chat about the upcoming girls in the run 5k and how mm -hmm. amazing that event is as well um you know, when we roll from, you know, fall to even thinking winter sports, I know schedules for a lot of families change. So sometimes even workout schedules change. And we just went from fall break. So a lot of folks are wrapping up traveling. Um, you know, I, I challenge you this week. I, I, I give my AM, 5.30 AM exercise classes every day. I give them a little quick, healthy challenge for the day. Can you eat two servings of fruit today? You know, can you take an extra 10-minute walk today? Can you climb 20 flights of steps today? So, right. you know, if you're listening, give yourself a little challenge today. And not just one for today but may you know something that you can do indoors even right. in the rain but give yourself a little challenge for this next week and um again reach out maybe and find an accountability partner or a cheerleader in your life let me know if i can help in any way all right heather we appreciate you being on oh uh, always a pleasure thank you all right that's heather foy talking with us this morning here on coach's corner live from mcdonald's on madison's hilltop thanks to jordan bear in studio we'll do it next saturday 
We'll talk with Scott Davidson from the Madison Parks Department next week. And that's from Coach's Corner Life from McDonald's right here on Madison's Hilltop. For all the WORX crew, I'm Tim Torrance on Works 96.7. These are more than just the sounds of a safe place to go after school. These are the sounds of interest being ignited and of mentors making an impact. The sounds of tutoring and tech and health and fitness and arts and music. At Boys and Girls Clubs, we don't do just one thing. We do whatever it takes to meet the needs of every kid who comes through those doors. Because whatever it takes is what it takes to build great futures. Great futures start here. Thank you.